AI, large language models, and ChatGPT have created a new career. And you make a bag. We ain't talking how to make a thousand a month using AI type money. We talking let's buy a house in the burbs, start a family type money. Should I get a prenup type money? And a ludicrous starting salary of between 250 and 335,000. That's right. When I saw this headline, I thought there's no way the internet must be trolling me once again. It just can't be true, but it is. I found the job posting on LinkedIn. Prompt engineer by an AI company called Anthropic. And they aren't the only ones. Scale.ai were the first to hire a prompt engineer when they hired Riley Goodside a couple months ago. Pretty cool to be the first people to start a new career entirely. The best part of this new profession, prompt engineering, well, besides the quarter million a year salary, is that no one has experience. It just became mainstream. It's new to everyone. We're all in the same boat. There's no college degree for a prompt engineer. You can become a prompt engineer. That's the whole goal of this video. I'm going to show you exactly how to master prompt engineering so that if you want to go get the six figure year salary, go do it. But before we master prompt engineering, we had to define exactly what it is. What do prompt engineers even do? Well, let's go to the real life example. Let's go to the LinkedIn post from Anthropic. Here's exactly what you do. You're going to discover, test, and document best practices for a wide range of tasks relevant to our customers. You must build up a library of high quality prompts or prompt change to accomplish a variety of tasks with an easy guide to help users search for the one that meets their needs. Build a set of tutorials and interactive tools that teach the art of prompt engineering to our customers. You basically find the best prompts to accomplish a task as effectively as possible. Seems simple. Some people might say that prompt engineering is irrelevant, but I see it as more of a coder. A coder or a software developer is just basically talking to a computer, telling it what to do by using a specific language. This is a language that the computer understands basically by giving certain commands and knows what to do, and the coder or software developer needs to learn that language. A prompt engineer is doing the exact same thing. It's telling AI what to do. They just use a different language. That's what we're going to do as a prompt engineer. We are going to learn those languages. But why would a position like this make so much money if you're basically just chatting to an AI? Think about all the tasks that you perform on a day-to-day -day basis. Can any of them be automated? Probably. I know I'm guilty of spending too much time drafting an email to make sure it's the perfect response and do that four to five times a day and it really starts to add up. Imagine if this AI could answer all emails for you. You'd have more time to work on different tasks, making you more productive. That's just one small example. Imagine the difference that this technology makes at scale. And that's where prompt engineering comes in. Prompt engineers identify areas where AI can assist or automate tasks, increase productivity while reducing costs. And it makes sense why prompt engineers are getting paid so well. It's because they're going to save corporations billions of dollars. So how do you become a prompt engineer? Grab your pencil, and your notebook, maybe even your iPad, whatever kids are using nowadays, because you have just entered prompting 101. First rule of prompting 101, there are stupid questions. You ask a stupid question, you're gonna get a stupid response. I'm not trying to be rude, this is literally the premise of prompting. High quality questions get high quality answers and vice versa. Prompt engineering is all about feeding the AI with information so it can make accurate responses. There are many different ways you can do this. One way is by giving the AI instructions or telling it what to do. You can instruct the AI to do simple things like summarize this blog post as if it was a fortune cookie message. Or you can instruct it to do more complex things like reading a sales email and replicating it with different customer names. It's pretty cool to watch the AI extrapolate from these instructions. Instruction prompts were great when you need to complete standard or fixed tasks, but assigning a role to an AI is another great way to generate high quality answers. In role prompting, you tell the AI to assume a specific role before giving instructions. I found a GitHub link that lists hundreds of role prompts. I'll leave that in the description down below. A few of my favorites are act as a travel guide. All you do is type in, I want you to act as a travel guide. I will write you my location. You will suggest a place to visit near my location. In some cases, I will also give you the types of places I want to visit. You will also suggest places of similar type that are close to my first location. My first request is I am in blank city and I want to visit only museums and historic sites. Try act as a character from a movie or a book. I love Hercules, it's my favorite Disney movie. So when I have tough questions. I ask myself, what would Hercules do? And with the act as a character prompt, these large language models can act in character or at least on brand. To maximize performance, don't be afraid to combine these prompt principles. You can ask the AI to act as a role and then give it an instruction. An example of that would be to prompt the AI to act as a personal trainer and to give me a workout plan and a meal plan for the week. The best part about AI is that it's interactive. If you don't like the answer, if you want a better explanation, you can ask the AI to elaborate or provide alternatives. Which brings us to our third method of prompting, chain of thought. Chain of thought or COT prompting encourages the AI to explain its reasoning. All right, so let's look at what the difference between a standard prompt and a chain of thought prompting would look like. On the left, you can see that Roger started with five tennis balls. He bought two more cans of tennis balls and in each can there was three tennis balls. And then we gave the answer to the AI. We said the answer is 11. Then we gave another of the same type of questions and we asked for an answer, but they got the question wrong. On the right hand side, we did the exact same thing. We asked the question, but then we gave an answer with the reasoning behind it. And then the output from the model did the same exact thing, which finally got the right answer. You can take chain of thought prompting even one step further by appending the words, let's think about this step by step. 
If you add those words, let's think about this step by step. These large language models, these AI, are able to explain its reasoning on its own in the back end. They basically generate their own chain of thought that answers the question. And this is called zero shot chain of thought prompting. It makes the AI show their reasoning step by step of how they got to an answer. And here's an example of that in action. Again, we're gonna ask a question. A juggler can juggle 16 balls. Half of the balls are golf balls and half of the balls are blue. How many blue golf balls are there? Answer, let's think about this step by step. And as you can see, the AI creates its own chain of thought on its own. There are 16 balls in total. Half the balls are golf balls. That means there are eight golf balls. Half the balls are blue. That means that there are four blue golf balls. I've noticed that the regular version of chain of thought is a little bit more accurate, but it is cool to see how the AI uses zero shot prompting in this manner. This is just gonna help you get better answers in the future because AI and computers have all the answers and the generated knowledge prompt will prove it. I'm sure by now you've experimented with ChatGPT instead of Google to get answers to certain questions. Well, here's what's going on in the back end during those knowledge commands. The generated knowledge approach asks the LLM to generate potentially useful information about the question before generating a response. This approach is composed of two intermediate steps, knowledge generation and knowledge integration. The knowledge generation process starts when the AI is asked to generate a step of facts about the question. This allows for different completions to be generated from the exact same prompt. Here's an example. The prompt, generate some numerical facts about objects, examples, input. Penguins have blank wings, knowledge birds have two wings, and penguins are a kind of bird. Input, a typical human being has blank limbs, knowledge humans has two arms and two legs. Input, question, knowledge blank. But here comes the cool part. The knowledge integration part is where this all comes together. The AI analyzes info that was generated during the knowledge generation process and then generates knowledge augmented questions to get the final answer. Basically the knowledge generated isn't always relevant. During the knowledge integration part is where the AI decides what part of the information is relevant. For example, I wanna know how many limbs a kangaroo had. The AI might generate these facts about kangaroos. Knowledge one, kangaroos are marsupials that live in Australia. And knowledge two, kangaroos are marsupials that have five limbs. However, only one of those two facts are relevant to the question that I asked. The knowledge integration phase would select the most valuable answer generated in the knowledge phase. So the AI would answer that kangaroos are marsupials that have five limbs. If you aren't getting the desired response from an AI, you might have to rephrase your question. The AI could be generating the correct information, but might not be integrating it properly. There are a ton of ways to improve a prompt. You can use your magic phrase. Let's explain that step-by-step step to get a more detailed answer. You can reorder your question items to get different answers. You can reword your questions to get further insight. Let's do this with an example. Instead of writing which one of the following Following, if true, most strengthens the argument. We can change that prompt to identify each choice as strengthens, weakens, or doesn't impact the argument. And you'll get different responses. Here's another example of a very poorly worded question that needs to be fixed for proper prompting. The Civil War, a conflict over expansion? Agree, disagree, and why? Yeah, that's a real discussion question from a real college class. It's too open-ended and it's not even worded properly. To get good discussion responses, you need to rewrite the question into a well-defined prompt. A well-defined prompt for this discussion question could look something like this. Explain the causes of the civil war and whether expansion played a role in the conflict. Include evidence to support your argument. Now we can even go one step further, add formatting and context directions. Write a highly detailed discussion response in the structure of an essay responding to the following prompt. Explain the cause of the civil war and whether expansion played a role in the conflict. Include evidence to support your argument. Giving the AI additional context is another great way to get more detailed responses. If you want the AI to analyze information but you aren't getting accurate responses, try adding examples to help the AI learn. For example, let's say you wanted ChatGPT to analyze a set of tweets and categorize them as either positive or negative. Kind of like this. Question, tweet, what a beautiful day. Answer, positive. Question, tweet, I love pockets on jeans. Answer, positive. Question, tweet, I love hot pockets. Answer, positive. Question, tweet, I hate this class answer negative. But you can take this one step further by adding more variety. Notice how above it shows three positive responses, only one negative response. And it says I love in two out of the three positive examples. So it's pretty easy. If we even this out, gave it two positive, two negative, and a little bit more variety in our examples, here's what that would look like. Question, tweet, what a beautiful day, obviously positive. Question, tweet, I love pox on jeans, obviously positive. Question, tweet, I don't like pizza, obviously negative. Question, tweet, I hate this class, negative. In the prompt biz, we call this exemplar distribution. So you've tried all these prompt adjustments and you still aren't getting the answers that you want. Why don't you go directly to the source with a, what do you want from me approach? So this is what I dived into chat GPT. I'm trying to get good results from GPT-3 on the following prompt. The civil war, a conflict over expansion, agree or disagree and why? Could you write a better prompt that is more optimal for GPT-3 and would produce better results? The answer was explain the causes of the civil war and whether expansion played a role in the conflict, include evidence to support your argument. That looks a lot like the prompt that we changed it to earlier. Prompt engineering is a skill that you really 
really should be learning at the beginning of 2023. Not only if you want a new six figure salary, if you aren't sure where to start learning, well, call me a comforter because I got you covered. Most of the information in this video came from a website called learnprompting.org. Obviously that link's gonna be in the description down below. I highly encourage you to check them out. And there's so much stuff you can do with this AI. I'll probably just show some B-roll on screen right now of 40 of my favorite things that you can use this tool to do while I talk about one more thing. Prompt engineering is an art. I wanted to show you the principles of prompt engineering so you can apply it to your area of expertise. Prompt engineering is a skill that you can learn today and secure a six figure salary next month. How many professions have you heard of where you can say the same thing? Not many. Prompt engineering is only the start of new careers started in the AI industry. I hope some of the prompts in this video let me know if it helped you or not. And I'm sure during your own research playing around with this tool, you're going to find a ton of new prompts that you can help us with. So why not throw those in the comments down below and let's all help each other. Prompt engineers in. Cody out.